settling in. You're seeing the landscape start to, to really mature. Yesterday, the, the, the theme was um, it's coming of age. And so what's your take on that? I mean, obviously, people starting to settle in. Cloudera made their move. You guys are staying on your course. What's the update? So, uh, you know, I think the, there's been a first generation, particularly in the Hadoop space of workloads. Um, I think we're really now at the beginning of the next wave of innovation um, that can happen on top of the Hadoop platform. Um, you know, when I look at the market space, uh, traditionally people have looked at just classic Hadoop market as well as NoSQL market, and you're going to begin to see those sort of collide a little bit. Why? Because Hadoop can now run interactive, online, real-time streaming uh, in, in Hadoop, right? So uh, how the market plays out, I think there's still more dynamics uh, in the market to play out, more changes to go. Um, but I think from our strategy perspective, I think the original bet we made a couple years ago when we founded the company was 100% open source, create a platform for this next generation data you know, computing environment, and really partner deeply with partners. Um, I think that's starting to show some evidence, particularly with some of the announcements from uh, Microsoft, Rackspace, and others. Sean, uh, can we go week. back to that original sort of business model discussion, because yeah. I think you know, it's coming back full circle now, and that business model discussion is getting a, a lot of attention in, in the press. When you guys spun out of Yahoo, you launched Hortonworks, you said, okay, we're going to be 100% open source, yep. we're not going to develop proprietary software on top of anything, we're going to go 100% you know, open source, and we're going to you know, sell services. People obviously ask the question amongst yourselves, I'm sure, how are we going to make money? Right. And the answer was, Services, right? Through software subscriptions primarily. Yep. So we, we are an enterprise software vendor, flat out. We just happen to deliver our support and maintenance services as an annual subscription, right? Um, my background has been early days JBoss, Red Hat, et cetera. So I've been in this o enterprise open source space for a while. The model of hold back manageability and upsell that as commercial. Uh, I did that back in 2004, 2005, right? So that was, that was sort of the one o rendition of a business model around open source. This market opportunity around Hadoop and big data is so large, our focus needs to be on making the market, making the market function with the, the big players who can extend their value prop with getting all data under management as part of solution architectures. That's why we very directly said, don't hold back the manageability, it will slow the adoption and it'll you know, tend to stall the market. So your bet is that, okay, that's going to allow uh, adoption to go faster and, and, and you know, rising tide lifts all ships. We'll benefit from that by exactly. selling our subscription services. Yes. But when you look at the, the, the various business models, you know, hardware, software, and services at the highest level, I mean, mm -hmm. software's got marginal economics get down to the cost of what the, you know, what the delivery mechanism is, I mean, a 99% gross margin, whatever yes. it is. Hardware, you know, maybe you got a 60% gross margin, you got product costs, whatever. The, the, the services business model is, is different, right? It's a, it's, as you grow, mm -hmm. you've got to add more people to, to service Yeah, so let me, let me clarify so, that. So help us understand yes. that. So our business, and we're about 200 customers now, so year and a half ago, GA product, fast forward, you know, 18 months, we're about 200, 200 customers. Out of that, about 70% of our business is on software subscriptions where people use the Hortonworks data platform, need support, patches, updates, and want to work with the experts who can drive new feature function from a roadmap perspective. So, that so that's platform. my question is how labor intensive are That is are a your classic services? software model where yeah. we just don't charge for a license up front. It's kind of like so it's you a pay maintenance for your model, license, it's a maintenance. If I model. think of Oracle's exactly. business, the fastest growing part of Oracle's business exactly. is the maintenance business. That's the piece that thirty percent is training and consulting, this is what you what you categorize as services. That's lower margin and yeah. that's a smaller percentage of the business. And it, by the way, it's good business, but you know, it's but good, you need to have more bodies. Good cash flow, but it's, yes. it's, it's, it's just economies of scale. So essentially, you have the same marginal economics as a software company. Exactly. For that 70%. Exactly. And our goal is 80%. That's how you run enterprise. 80-20. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So like I said, we are a software vendor. Can I talk about the, uh, the, the, all the rages of the data platform? Obviously, that's, that's the focus on it. Mm -hmm. Everyone's even talking about across all, of it, all companies, right? Sure. So it's about the data platform, which is a lot of uh, apps, a lot of decoupling, uh, highly cohesive elements to it, MapReduce, uh, 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 Hive, you name it, you, it's in there. So you're separating all that stuff out, Yarn in particular, mm -hmm. for you guys, right? Um, talk about on that licensing thing, the discussion, the, the Storify conversation, because yesterday they had a good presentation, a lot of conversation around uh, Spot, I'm sorry, Spotify, I'm sorry, not Storify, Spotify. Yes. What are they doing with you guys? Because there was an article that written, was written about those guys on GigaOM, they were sure. on Cloudera. Can you clarify that? We want get to the, get the scoop on that. Sure, so 
Um, you know, my takeaway from the GigaOM article was less about who's competing with who. I think Cloudera will manage their own strategy. It was really more of a, um, you know, an understanding of how open source model works is uh, people download the technology, deploy it for free. Spotify is right around 700 nodes of a Hadoop cluster. Um, they're doing you know, a lot of music matching and other things. There's great blogs and there was sessions here at Strata that talked about their use case. Um, they, when it came time for them to opt into a support relationship and a relationship with a vendor that can help them drive more features into the platform they're relying on, um, they chose Hortonworks for that um, relationship. Um, so they are a paying customer, but they, uh, on Monday, the kickoff of Strata, we actually had a, our customer advisory board just down the street, and they're one of the customers on our customer advisory board. You know, they're looking at advanced streaming analytics, and so what we're doing around Apache Storm and our plans to bring it into the platform is of utmost interest to uh, customers like Spotify. But how the open source process works is people get the technology, no, you know, no roadblocks to use, including manageability, and then at, at a point where we earn the right to uh, uh, you know, conduct business with them, then they can opt in, and then every year is a voting year, right? We're a subscription model. And it's incumbent upon us to serve them well, and next year their relationship likely expands because that's how the model works. Talk about the real-time piece of it. You mentioned uh, um, Storm, uh, the Spark out there. What else is out there real-time? Um, so, so the breadth of functionality that we see directly um, is clearly MapReduce Batch, Interactive SQL, right? HBase and Accumulo for uh, online databases, right? So arguably that's fueling sort of web applications, mobile applications. And we happened to look at the real-time streaming in the Apache Software Foundation. We chose to uh, lean in on Apache Storm and begin to integrate that into the platform. Why? Because it's been out for a while. It has a good, vibrant community. Um, and um, it, can, it can provide that engine for sensor and machine data for like telco, healthcare, and insurance industries that we want to go chase, right? Um, there are other technologies out there that can plug into Yarn that are either commercial or open source, and we encourage that, right? But uh, we happen to make a, a bet on Apache Storm to actually bring it in as a first-class data service. We've seen the rise of Accumulo. Obviously, Dave and I have been following Squirrel, the folks there for, since they were a startup, and obviously Accumulo is getting a lot of attention. Why is Accumulo so, so the rage right now? What, give us background on that. Sure, so I think Accumulo's uh, value prop, it's very similar to other NoSQL databases like uh, Apache HBase. I would argue uh, HBase is probably more mainstream appeal to it. Um, what we see particularly with Accumulo is a lot of interest in the federal in Intel space. So we have customers who we serve with Accumulo. We have uh, um, you know, a couple of the committers for that project as Hortonworks, Hortonworks employees so we can drive features, fix bugs, et cetera. Um, security um, is one of the value propositions. But it'll be interesting to see the dynamics in the open source community because the HBase community already has uh, JIRAs and features slated for future releases that begin to address some of the security notions as well. So um, we tend not to be religious in that NoSQL space. I, I like to describe the Hadoop market as, let's say it's a billion dollars, right? And the NoSQL market is about a billion and a half. Um, my Italian background, I describe it as <laughs> thin slivers prosciutto, right, for each of these NoSQL databases, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's a fragmented market. It's a harder one to sort of play out. I think MongoDB, those guys are doing a great job, and they have a clear lead in that space. But uh, the rest of that market is highly fragmented and very uh, application-specific. And so some of those will come into Hadoop as first-class citizens uh, into an enterprise Hadoop platform. So yeah, and Accumulo obviously doing well in the government. And yeah, a absolutely. Of, a lot of places they really yeah. can't talk about much. But yeah, insurance, I think, is another one that's emerging as well as um, some hospitality use cases. I want to go back to the business model because it's been, it's been argued that you guys bought the business at you know, this company or that company. But from what I understood, what you, you just explained is, you didn't charge an upfront license, you charge for the maintenance. So hence, the overall cost is going to be significantly lower. Right. So your bet, now, thinking about the TAM, thinking about the market opportunity, I can see a lot of people saying, oh, well, that means there's less of a revenue opportunity. But you would, I'm presuming, say, no, wait, the market's so much bigger. Yes. So if we can, if we can triple the number of transactions that we do, even though we're selling them at, you know, let's say half the rate or whatever percentage of maintenance is of the total, over the life of a contract, the maintenance is actually going to be most of the... And, <laughs> and data under management yeah. is very valuable. So it isn't, 
and it's not a knock on Red Hat with the open source, uh, uh, you know, operating system model, which is where they started. Um, but this market opportunity is much bigger than that. And but their same, the same trajectory that made the inflection was if you get strategic partners like Teradata, SAP, you know, HP, and others reselling it and pulling it into the market, it'll it'll make that market faster. And inherently, we'll get more subscription volume. So you're saying you're following the playbook of the early days of Red Hat, but mm -hmm. but longer term, you're not going to veer off in the, in the path that they've gone with developing sort of proprietary layers on top. Am I understanding that right, or is, um, is that your it, commitment, or not you know, I think if you look at Red Hat, the, the, their, their software is 100% open source. Yeah, absolutely, right? right? It's available under a subscription, and they do distinguish between upstream community innovation and uh, downstream package enterprise product. We do the same thing where the Apache projects are our upstream innovation, and then we package stable releases. That was why this Hadoop 2 release was so critical is it needed to land GA in the community first before so, so, we'll bring so you it would, you would argue then your, your model is very much like, like I, Red Hat. I would argue yes. What do you make of, of Canonical and their efforts with Ubuntu and the disruption that's going on in, in, with Red Hat right now? What, do you, what are your thoughts on um, that? I think that's a, a much different stage of the market. I mean, Hadoop is mature. making this market and yeah. there's still a lot of runway ahead of us. Um, you know, Red Hat and that, the Linux uh, market is very mature, right? So. Let's have that conversation in another five years. Yeah, kill me with that problem. Out, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now, I think this, this market has the opportunity to be very big. The other thing I would say is Hadoop's influence on the larger big data market, let's say, is about 50%, give or take, based off of estimates. That's not just the software. That's hardware, that's services, et cetera. So that's, it's a very influential technology. It could even be higher. It's very time. disruptive, yeah. right? So. so talk about the, uh, the two other themes we hit yesterday were pretty hard, hard hitting was uh, enterprise ready and then apps. Yes. Um, apps seems to be, analytics seems to be the killer app. Obviously everyone's talking about analytics and BI. Sure. Um, but the big data apps are kind of native everywhere. It's not like there's an app market for big data. It's pretty much everything. Yes. Um, talk about you, how you guys talk about it internally to Horton. We're obviously having a platform, you're enabling innovation. So I want to talk, you talk about one, the new stuff like apps that you see, and then two, the enterprise ready uh, message that the customers are sending to everyone, hey, get enterprise ready. What does that mean to you guys? Right. How do you talk about that internally? Right, so the, um, the app story, we're clearly focused on being an enterprise data platform, right? So in many respects, we're horizontal, right? Um, but what we want to do is publicize and work with partners as well as customers who are do delivering vertical solutions on top of that and get people to tell those stories like, you know, Charles Boise at University of California, Irvine Medical Center talking about how you know, they're actively collecting patient data when patients are at home so they can do better predictive analytics on healthcare delivery and things like that. Um, I think, again, these, these applications are very horizontally focused, but very relevant in financial services, insurance, or what Well, have you guys are horizontal. The apps can be vertical. Yes, the apps are definitely very vertical. So you guys vertical. have no, you know, you don't pr project any kind of requirements other than just use the platform. And what in the platform so is the key? So let me relate it to our Apache Storm uh, uh, investment, right? So um, specific, we don't want to chase the complex event processing market horizontally, right? Um, what we want to do is we want to specifically target sensor machine data processing in a handful of vertical markets to round out the enterprise capabilities around Storm for those particular use cases, right? So whether it's telco, you know, large volumes of mobile interactions, things like that, or uh, telematics as it relates to insurance so you can optimize your car insurance or things like that. Those d very concrete use cases are what we're interested in adding additional feature function into the project to round it out for enterprise use cases. So that's one is listen to the market, listen to the early, uh, vertical movement and begin to round out the open source projects capabilities in those areas, number one. Number two is we spend a good chunk of time on uh, APIs, integrating with the operational tooling in the data center, the development tooling in the data center, um, and the data access and data movement uh, integration with partners. So REST APIs around Apache Ambari and how that integrates with OpenStack or System Center or Teradata Viewpoint or other management systems is an enterprise feature. It's an important feature for enterprises that use their existing tools and skills, right? Um, H catalogs APIs for enabling people to access the data 
from uh, RESTful calls very easily. Um, that facilitates integration with Teradata on high-speed data movement, things like that. So um, there are features that you add and APIs that you add into these projects to address that enterprise readiness um, point. There's more work to be done. Um, actually, shortly, probably in a couple weeks, you'll be seeing us on hortmarks.com slash lab section of our page. We display uh, multi-phase roadmap investments around interactive SQL with Stinger, around real-time stream processing with Storm. You'll see um, security as another area where there will be a holistic sort of expressed viewpoint on areas of investment so we can recruit others in the community to work with us and accelerate the movement there. Yeah, the, so. the Hortonworks blog is actually a great resource for people. You got a lot of you know, practitioner knowledge there. And you guys publish the roadmaps. I mean, it's, you know. That's, that's the that's other awesome. aspect is the source <laughs> code is out in the open, but the, the roadmap, the investment roadmap is out in the open as well. Why? Because that helps us recruit others like Microsoft and Facebook and others to invest in making the Talk about, the, talk about the maturity of the deployments. What kind of size clusters are you seeing? Obviously, you know, depending on who you talk to, oh, I got a 10, 10 20 node cluster here, 200 node cluster. I mean, sure. All right, and the 10,000s, tens of thousands, what are your, what do your customer deployments look like? So we range um, currently from clearly the tens of nodes up into the thousands and thousands and thousands of nodes that you would get at um, Yahoo, for instance, who's been running the, uh, you know, the Hadoop 2 stack in production for almost about a year now, right? So um, the cool thing about this next-gen platform in their case is they're actually able to decrease their nodes from 45,000 down to 32,000 because you get twice the performance and twice the number of jobs that the new architecture enables you to do. So it gives them more headroom and it enables them to actually manage and decrease their footprint. But that's sort of the scale is tens of thousands to just people getting started. I spend most of my time, particularly with mainstream enterprises, is those tens of thousands, you should just take the comfort that the technology is proven at scale in those scenarios. But let's talk about mainstream enterprise, which is not clearly 10,000 nodes out of the gate. It's 10, 20, 40, right? And then they graduate up. What we're seeing in our renewals, um, just as a data point, is a year later, we're seeing three to four X growth in the clusters that they start off with, right? So it might be 10, 20, then gets to <coughs> just below 100 or you know thereabouts, and then grows from there. So, you're, so from a dollar value standpoint, your renewals are over 100%, presumably. Yes, right now, uh, <coughs> yes, exactly. Yep. Nice. It's, it's, so it's 100% awesome. and yeah. then uh, up growth right. on that. And that's yeah. how you drive the open source model is yeah. you earn their business. So um, you know, if we scare away a potential uh, user of the technology from a free perspective, from uh, engaging with us on a relationship, we have lost something. So that was my reaction to the GigaOM article is um, where the statement was made, they didn't lose anything um, by uh, Spotify going to where it works. Yes, you did, you lost the right to serve that user and, and enable them as a customer. I mean, in traditional software terms, you lost the maintenance stream. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we got, we got a break here, but I want to ask a final question. What's, what do you think the outlook's going to be going forward? Obviously, you guys are staying your course it's coming, but in the industry, as, as the landscape starts to harden a little bit in some areas, people are building, going to the next level, what do you see the evolution going for the next year? Um, so I, I think we'll see, I mean, particularly what we've seen over the past year is, uh, you know, vendors like SAP and others, more of the traditional vendors getting very concrete around the solution architectures and exp expanding their ability to address data under management, including Hadoop use cases. So those who have shied away from it or have been tentative, um, I think there's a leaning in process that's started and that'll continue. Um, what we'll also see is, and we've been clear about it, is Hadoop is one important, but just one data system in an overall uh, modern data architecture. And I think we'll see that manifest across a variety of different uh, classic vendors as well as uh, use, uh, customers um, who are actually telling their stories about how they're integrating you know, real-time mobile applications with classic Hadoop data processing in modern architectures, and I think that trend will continue. The third, just selfishly, uh, that I like to see, and if you talk to Arun Murthy, one of our founders, is more and more data processing engines that run natively in Hadoop, um, so you get more out of the data that you put there, right? You get it all in one spot, you, want, you need to interact with it in multiple ways, and it'll be interesting to see the innovation that happens uh, this coming year around. So it sounds that. like we're getting to a data OS model. 
Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, Sean, always a pleasure to have you on theCUBE. Uh, obviously, great insight. Obviously, the strategy piece is always interesting, but also people are making money, so it's a good year yep. uh, for the business. Things are growing. Uh, this is theCUBE. We're right back live in New York City for Big Data NYC coverage, and we want to thank you guys for supporting us this year. Yeah, Hortonworks and Wendisco, you guys stepped up and support theCUBE, yep. underwriting our independent coverage. We're actually outside in front of the Hilton at the Warwick, bringing you all the conversations. And we have a crowd chat. Go to crowdchat.net slash strataconf, and you'll find a spam-free environment where you can interact with the conversation here in theCUBE and throughout the show. So go to CrowdChat for, to, to com communicate with your, your friends and thought leaders. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. The CUBE is